So what we'll do now is shown the diagram which nicely shows how, how formal works in effect. So you start from some initial state which we decide. And on the next clock there will be a finite number of states we can reach on the next clock based upon the design and the constraints. And on the next clock we can reach some more states. So there will be a finite number of states we can reach on the clock after that. And on the next cycle there will be more states we can reach. And this goes on and on and on until we've explored the entire state space. So the benefits of this formal analysis is we don't need any test bench. You know, there's no stimulus. Even small diameters, you know, even making 10 clocks might be the equivalent of millions upon millions of simulation test vectors. It's exhaustive. You know, if there are any bugs in there, we find them. There's no such thing as corner cases. We will find them. And the problem with this, of course, is at some stage, uh, the state space becomes too big to evaluate in any reasonable kind of time. So you might get undetermined results. So these red dots representing the bugs, all of them are going to be found by formal. And contrast that with simulation where what you're doing is starting from some initial state which is all, almost certainly the reset state. You're making a path through the state space based upon what your random stimulus is doing in your test bench. So you don't really know what you're doing. Even if you could see this map of states, which you can't, but if you could, it's still probably not controllable. You couldn't follow that specific path if you wanted to because you wouldn't know what stimulus you needed to do that. Notice you're reaching states more than once, so in formal you only need to visit each state once, you know everything about it once you've been there. In simulation you tend to keep coming back to the same state and learning nothing new. So in these simulations we ran here, so two simulations, we followed a path through state space and we might have hit a bug like we do here, we got lucky here, we hit this bug, but all these other bugs we didn't hit. So that's why people run tens of thousands of, of simulation runs, of tests in simulation in order to maximize the chances of hitting bugs, but you've got no guarantee. And that's the problem with simulation, you, you can't test everything, every scenario, and you may or may not hit a bug, and what you hope is that by writing random stimulus and having coverage that you maximize your chances of hitting states that reveal a bug. So another way of viewing that same information is like this. We start from the initial state here, the blue dot, and on the next clock we see how many new states can we reach, so we can reach one more new state here. We don't need to go and visit state A again because we already know everything about that. On the next clock we can reach four more new states. On the clock after that we reach one more new state and so on until we've explored all the state space. Within simulation what you find is you start from here, uh, you take a path through this state space and you're revisiting the same state, so for example state B. We've visited it one, two, three, four times. We learn nothing new. After the first time we've been there, we learn nothing new. And notice it's really hard to get to these deep states. You know, it's a really convoluted, specific set of stimulus that will be needed in order to reach these deep bugs. So that's what's known in formal as bug hunting, when you're, you're reaching these deep parts that simulation really struggles with, even if you use lots of different random seeds in tens of thousands of simulations, you still can't get here, other than by pure luck.